Hi, so today I am going to talk about uh, some of the machine learning application in a given data set. So the test data set that we are using here is um, created from the enhance and for the purposes of simplicity we are just inputting all of the um, missing observations. So in this particular data set there is no missing observations. <clears throat> And we are essentially working with two different models where we have cholesterol variable, which is a continuous variable, which is predicted by all of these covariates. And then we have a binary version of the cholesterol variable, which is predicted by all of these variables. And by checking the STR, you can check all of the variable types uh, that are set appropriately. All right. so. In this case, what um, we are going to do is we are going to run a regression model and then we will um, work with ridge regression, last regression and elastic net regression and show you how to run those kind of models as well. So let us start with the regression models. By the way, all of these descriptions you are seeing here are already discussed in the machine learning lecture. All right, so let us work with the uh, no shrinkage method or the general regression formula, right? Remember at an earlier lab, we discussed about how to use caret package and we are essentially going to use that caret package um, in this particular lab. So using that caret package, we are using a cross validation and we are using 10 fold cross validation and we are um, using this linear model as the method and in the train control we have already defined that we are going to use a tenfold cross validation. So after this, after the training, you can see um, the RMSC or R square or MAE uh, from the regression right after a tenfold cross validation and then you can also use the stepwise regression as we have seen earlier as well in earlier labs using the backward elimination um, and you can see um, the regression fit and the final model using these dollar sign dollar sign final model and it will give you all of the coefficients from that final model so original model has 22 predictors but after doing the stepwise regression we are getting 18 and um, even though this is the 18 coefficients that you are getting that does not mean 18 predictor because see for race you have to so if you have any um, variable that is uh, categorical for those type of variables, you will have, um, you may have more than one um, coefficients associated with those variables. All right, so let's move on to shrinkage. Um, and how can we run the shrinkage? For running shrinkage, we need to load our package GLM <clears throat> and in the train method, we have to specify GLM method. Again, we are working with the 10 for cross validation. Um, but if you remember from the cl class, we talked about uh, the alpha and the lambda, right? Um, and in the class, we talked about how we can find a suitable lambda based on cross validation. So in this case, we are not really finding a lambda based on cross validation. We are basically uh, setting just one value. We are not giving any other option. We just want to learn a um, lasso method uh, using this GLM. And this will this will give you um, these um, RMSC and R square values. One thing to note here is that I'm calling this alpha 
equal to one that means i'm working with a lasso model right and in this case we're again working with another lasso model but this time we will give um, many of many values of the lambda value so that we can try to identify based on five-fold cross validation which is the best lambda value for us so we can define the tune grid and we can define the control function um, to specify how many cross validations and in the train control we simply specify the control and the tune grid to specify the grid search for the alpha and lambda and um, the cross validation five-fold cross validation notice that even though we are defining alpha and lambda alpha has one value so it is not going to change in the alpha value only thing it is going to do is it will try to find the optimal value of lambda and then you see all of these lambda values and associated rmsc values right and if you plot them in the plot will look, look like this that these are the rmsc values and these are the lambda values and you can see uh, somewhere around three we are we are getting the best tune value for the lambda so that's what we are getting here using the best tune and if you want to do a bit more digging because you already know that the that the rmsc plot has a pattern so maybe the optimization is not exactly here it could be somewhere here or it could be here right so now that we know it is somewhere in between we can try to do a more refined grid search between two and three and if we get the base value equal to three that means maybe the we should do a grid search on uh, more than three right so point from point three to point four we can do that if we get a best alpha value based on this analysis um, exactly equal to point three but let's see from point two to point three what is the lambda optimum lambda value we're again setting the same uh, arguments the only thing that is changing is that from if this was from 0 to 1 before and now we are refining our uh, grid and from this you can see the best value is 0.21 so somewhere here uh, is the best value so you can try to do a general grid search using a uh, not so thin parameter list and then once you identify a an area where you think the optimum value might exist then you can do a more refined analysis to find a better lambda value all right so in the previous example what we have done is that we have found out the specific lambda value um, where our alpha was fixed alpha was equal to one but in here, what we are doing is that we are choosing three different alpha values. So when we're setting alpha equal to zero, that means what? That means we're getting a ridge. When we're setting it equal to one, it is giving us the lasso. When we're setting it to 0.5, um, then we are essentially getting a elastic net. And then we are doing alpha and lambda both um, grid search and everything else is the same and in here you can see based on your mixing parameter so this is the mixing parameter for ridge for lasso for elastic net it gives somewhat different um, optimization values right so for this green or this lasso um, the optimum value may be somewhere here but for the mixing value or the elastic net the optimum value might be somewhere here so depending on your alpha value your rmsc's optimum value for lambda might change and we can find the best alpha and lambda value equal to 0.5 and lambda equal to 0.6 all right 
So, so far we have worked with continuous outcome. Let us work with binary outcome now. So in this binary outcome, again, what we are doing is that we are doing the grid search. We're setting the um, five fold cross validation. But as we have seen earlier, uh, we have to set up our summary function and the class probability. And we have to specify that this is a binomial family. And we want to check the ROC curve to check the performance. And we check the performance for all of these values. Um, and then we get some plots like this, where you can see um, lambda equals zero and alpha equal to one was the best value, right? And you can try to see what are the predicted values in these scenarios as well. So, so far we have talked about just the shrinkage approach. So first we talked about shrinkage approach for the continuous. Then we talked about the shrinkage approach for the binary. Now let us move on to a different method altogether where we are talking about the decision tree. So first let us talk about the decision tree for the binary outcome. So we are going to use the formula dot bin um, and we are going to use R part two. So this R part two is basically the cart method or the decision tree method. Uh, for the classification. How do you specify the classification? You specify the metric equal to ROC, right? Everything else, the tune grid and the control grid is the same. And then you can, um, you can fit the final model based on the decision tree. And it kind of looks like this. So when you plot, um, the plot gets truncated a bit, but you can see triglyceride less than 108, um, then you can be healthy. If it is um, greater, th greater than this, then uh, what happens if you have um, triglyceride based on this cut point, whether you can be healthy or not. And you can also find the predicted probabilities in this way. And of course, you can optimize the depth, right? So. In the previous model, we, we just worked with the maximum depth equal to two. That means we are just going one step and two step. But now we can work with uh, maximum depth from two to 10. So it can go very far, um, starting from two to 10. And we are using the five fold cross validation and we are again using the R, R part. That means the cart method. And that will give us a rock curve like this and then you can see the using the best tune you can get the maximum depth three uh, that gives us the best model so what does that model look like that model kind of looks like this where um, there is another cut point based on the diastolic blood pressure similarly you can also work with other methods uh, because we already know that the tree based method is not probably going to be the best method because it has some instability problem. So boosting is one approach where you can use uh, many different trees to come up with a better answer. So again, you can set up the interaction depth and there are some additional parameters like entry, or whether you want to use shrinkage within bootstrap, that is also possible. And we are again using the five fold cross validation in a binary outcome scenario. For the method, we have to specify GBM to fit the uh, boosting. So GBM stands for generalized boosting method. And then we can do all of this uh, grid search based on all of the parameters that we have uh, set here, right? And then you can uh, find out um, what is happening with the rock in terms of different shrinkages that we have set. And also remember in the lecture, we have talked about the variable importance. So in terms of the variable importance, you can get all of these numbers or you can plot them like this. Um, and by this criteria, we can see the triglyceride variable is highly predictive of the outcome. And some of the other variables like uh, physical recreational or race or uh, income are not so uh, useful in predicting the outcome. Again, you can get the predicted values in this way. The other method we talked about in the lecture was the random forest approach. 
So the random forest fitting works exactly the same way, but only thing you need to change is you have to specify method equal to random forest. And that comes from a particular package known as the random forest package. And then you can similarly do the tuning to get the fit and also you can get the variable importance plots using the random forest and you can see the plot. Here you can see triglyceride is again uh, the best predictor of the outcome. Age is the second. Whereas when we were doing um, bagging, uh, sorry, boosting, uh, we see the age was again the second variable. Uh, but diabetes was the third. Let, let us look at the random forest. So in terms of the random forest, BMI was the third, not the diabetes. So depending on the algorithm you are using, the variable importance plot may choose different order of the variables. All right, so you can uh, fit, get the fitted values in this way from the predictor train.